The idea of capacity changes when we're analyzing the service sector. So you, know, you think of, okay, well, what's the biggest difference in the service sector? Well, the biggest difference is the, is the physical plant. You know, <clears throat> what buildings do I need? Uh, how much space do I need? And, and the reason that that's uh, an issue, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not really producing something that's going to occupy a lot of space. Uh, you think about services, I mean, generally speaking, services are consumed at a point in time. And honestly, for a lot of services, the service is consumed almost at the exact same time of production. So things that we do notice with services, you know, you, you can't store, you can't store services. So you think of our current circumstance with the coronavirus. Think of all of the service sector employees that have been sent home uh, in this quarantining. If you think about that, we will never recover the days the days missed by those people in the service sector. Now, I mean, if we were extracting coal and creating pig iron and eventually steel, that, that iron ore is going to stay right where it is. It's going to be perfectly fine to use in the future. But services won't be, right? That's the biggest, in my mind, that's one of the biggest losses of the uh, quarantining and this, what this coronavirus has done. So <clears throat> services, we can't really store them in inventory. And, you know, you think about service firms, there are a lot of them. Service, the service sector is the largest sector of the U.S. economy, and no two firms are exactly the same. You know, so I, I really can't look and say, okay, I'm running a consulting firm in economics. Uh, how does McDonald's run? Oh, well, how's that going to help me? And so, you know, I sometimes I can't even look at other places and say, okay, well, how did they solve their problem? Can I use that? But, by the way, I mean, that's not 100% off limits. Certainly, I can look at other consulting firms. All right other issues that come along um, what does capacity even mean for the service sector you know when I was working in the consulting world um, when we increased our capacity it usually meant hiring more labor but that labor didn't have to be in an office that we that where we were in fact some of the labor was only in our office on occasion and frequently did their work somewhere else, often at their own home office. So capacity may not have the same meaning for the service sector. Now it might, right? Because McDonald's has the same same meaning. I they are producing something and they are producing a service, but there is a there is a physical product that uh, leaves with the customer. So all right. So how do we control capacity if we're a, a service sector? Well, unlike the production sector, uh, if, you're, if you are a service provider, you have to be close to your customers. And this will pop up over and over again. So first and foremost, solve your problem of capacity, but make sure you remain close to your customers. So notice if, if you've been, I've been in Pikeville for nearly eight years the McDonald's that is just uh, on Hambly Boulevard uh, is not the same McDonald's that was here when I first moved in. Uh, in fact, they've completely uh, kind of, they built right over top of where the other one was. I mean, they, they shut down for a minimum amount of time and reconstructed it. I, my memory is from the ground up, they restructured it. <clears throat> so, now what do I do in McDonald's uh, if there's an increase in demand for my product? Uh, generally speaking, I apply more labor to the fixed building and machinery uh, that are already in place. And so, you know, I might be able to immediately meet demand just by increasing the number of employees. You know, and I would be curious, I mean, how does PMC handle handle an increase in demand. 
you know, a golf course, how do they handle an increase in demand? I think they're a little different, right? Because the golf course, you're not going to change the dimension of the golf course. It is what it is. And so in a golf course, how they maintain uh, order is tee times. So, you know, one person or one group can leave about every 15 minutes. So how then in a service sector do you handle the next problem, which is uh, demand variability? You know, sometimes there are people wanting your product, sometimes there are not. And, you know, one way you might handle that in the service sector is laying off employees or sending them home. All right, so <clears throat> here's the idea. In the service sector, capacity is often not a, a question about the, the physical facility. So physical plant means the building where it's housed. Uh, usually I can use labor to, to alter my volume increases or decreases in demand for my product. Um, and so capacity becomes slightly different here than it was uh, in the production sector. First off, you know, what is the workload per employee? Can it be adjusted? Can I push them harder? Or is there a physical limit to the output that they can produce? Uh, what about the length of the processing time? You know, in a consulting prob in a consulting problem, uh, like the kind I used to work with, there usually was only so much I could physically do in a given day, and you know the length of the processing time. Sometimes that was a function of what the attorney said in terms of how fast they had to have a report, uh, but sometimes that was. Um, also, uh, you know, shorter production processes, maybe the report wasn't exactly what I wanted it to be. Uh, there are still bottlenecks, though. It doesn't matter whether we're in the service sector or the production sector, there are still bottlenecks. And I hate to, to kind of admit this, but when I was doing consulting work, I was the bottleneck. I, I was the guy who did all of the mathematical analysis and did the statistical analysis. And sometimes when, when we were running processes, uh, a, particular, uh, a particular client might have to wait for a report until I can break through the mathematics and start generating outcomes. And then some of the other people took over and did the writing. And the writing wasn't as much of a bottleneck. There was usually, uh, we had about two or three really good writers there. So... <clears throat> Every sector, service or production, has bottlenecks. All right, so <clears throat> like the production sector, uh, the service sector, you need to know your processes. So in the consulting firm where I worked in, we had several processes. We had somebody who did the data extraction. And so frequently people would come to us uh, with analysis that required data and oddly enough they didn't even know how to get it off of their computer so that we could look at it but we had we had a guy who we could send and he would extract data okay well he was one step in the process we had at least two accountants these two accountants would kind of pull apart the financial data uh, so that they so that I could see the parts and the pieces uh, and then I was another step. I was the analysis step in the process. And then the man who owned the place was off in the writing, uh, mainly because he was the one that was going to have to be communicating with the client and communicating in a courtroom and in a deposition. So <clears throat> we knew what the processes were. We could break it up into steps. Um, were there any customer expectations at each step? And the answer often, at least in my world in consulting, was, was definite maybe, right? I mean, sometimes the, sometimes the client thought they knew what we were going to see. And sometimes they had a pretty good feel for what, what types of things when analyzing a business that we were going to see. Um, we also, like everywhere else, need to figure out how to measure a unit of work in a service process. 
this this allowed the guy who ran the place to give estimates to attorneys when they would call us up with problems and say, you know, how much is this going to cost? And then once we had work flowing in, we had to have somebody scheduling it so that, you know, there were no bottlenecks or that during a bottleneck on my part, somebody could be working on a different project until mine freed up. So those are the general steps, step ones of knowing your service process. Uh, in step two of the service uh, process, I need to understand the capacity that we currently possess. Uh, and given the workload of a particular service industry, uh, are, are the employees able to handle the load? And are they meeting the goals of the firm? So in this consulting position I was in, the goal of the firm was to make our customers happy. And it wasn't necessarily the lowest price because we were a little bit pricey. But people came to us because they usually got a very good end product. A uh, well thought out, and well laid out solutions to real problems. <clears throat> and then there should always be a step, it seems like in all of our planning processes, for looking into the future. You have to know in the service sector, are we growing? And this was one of the weird things when I was in the consulting business. We were really, really overloaded with work. And then all of a sudden, uh, I don't know, it's like November of 2011, it just stopped. And it stopped for about six months. You know, we thought we were growing. In fact, so much so that the guy who owned the place wanted to sell. But his wanting to sell was at the wrong time because I didn't see the value in the product. Right? Because it wasn't moving all the time. All right, well, the next thing we want to talk about is you know, we've looked at ourselves, whether as producers or service sector, and we're saying, how do I measure the capacity of us? And the next, the next video is not about us. The next video is about, well, what about everybody that we depend on? And what about everybody that depends on us for product? You know, how do we control the supply chain capacity? So that's next. Thank you.